So before we start this video, you've probably read the title and are thinking, Lydia, haven't you made this video? Yes, yes I have. And it's currently my channel trailer for when you come to my channel. And there's a siren. To be completely honest, the reason I'm making this video is because I left out certain details in the previous videos because I wasn't comfortable sharing them. But I'm at a point in my recovery now where I feel like I am ready to be open about everything. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Pow. So like many others, my story starts in my childhood. To be blunt, I was abused by my mum, which hasn't helped my mental health as an adult. I was kicked, hit, slapped, shoved on the floor, emotionally abused. I was basically treated like an emotional punch bag. At the age of five, I was sexually assaulted by mummy's friend. When I was six, seven, I started self-harming, which thinking about it now is an incredibly young age to actually start doing something like that. When I was around the age of eight I started to experience hallucinations which at the time I didn't know was hallucinations. The hallucinations that I had was fireworks and colour blocks that I could control with my with high blink. So around the age of 12 I developed anorexia. I struggled with that until I was 18. I struggled a lot with my weight. I didn't have any scales so I couldn't weigh myself but I didn't eat or I would be out for a meal and not eat just because I didn't want to eat and in my house my mum had us all sit down around the table to eat. Then when I was 13 I had a manic episode that landed me on the section. I was really unwell with it. It was it was ma mania with psychosis so I was difficult to deal with and it's down to my mom that I actually got sectioned because no one in my life really knew what I was thinking. I went from being this super depressed teenager who was being bullied to this euphoric, happy, cheery bubbly version of me which is not me at all. I struggle quite sh severely with depression which I have done since I was a kid. Oh my head. Ooh. Ooh. I'm getting a migraine. Fan fucking dusty. I developed anxiety quite a, at quite a young age because I was bullied throughout all my school experience. So yeah, I was bullied it's pretty severely and my anxiety just, it got the better of me. So when I was 17, my BPD really started to come out. I shut the door to out when I was 13 and I had the manic episode that I talked about before. I was diagnosed with bipolar type 1. I've been diagnosed with bipolar type 1 since then. So I've always had bipolar type 1. So my BPD started coming out when I was 17. I took I took an overdose of my medication. And my first overdose landed me in ICU. When I was 17, my my boyfriend at the time, well ex-boyfriend, because I broke up with him, which is what I did, what I did. My ex-boyfriend jumped in front of a train, in front of me, and his last words to me were, this is because of you. That haunts me. That was the main trigger for my PTSD. When I was 20, I started going out drinking with a group of friends I'd made and drinking led to cocaine. I've made a video on my drug abuse story and I don't want to go too much into it in this video just because I'm trying to keep it as least, least amount of triggering as possible. I fell very heavily into the use of cocaine 
and it made me ill because I craved the speed I was thinking it was simulating mania now I love being manic because I get so much done I can think of everything that I need to think of I can get stuff done I'm creative in that time I go for more runs but it gets bad when I fall into psychosis cocaine for me simulated the mania part without psychosis occurring so for me it was that that made me want to use it and probably also the fact that it's very addictive <laughs> maybe a small detail there so hey, back to the mental health side of things when I was 19 and 20 I got sectioned twice to an assessment hospital where it's dorms and not individual rooms but you was allowed to have your phone charger if you had it with you which I didn't now something else that happened in 2018 I was 20 at the time was I got arrested now let's talk about this for a minute I called the crisis team for help because I was suicidal they called the police police turned up my flat arrested me took me to custody put me in a self-harm suit in a self-harm cell with glass like you know gla it's like a fishbowl got refused bail because of risk to self and then got part of section 2 so yeah in court they used my custody record and they got all charges against me dismissed when I was 20 I was diagnosed with depersonalization and derealization because I kept I couldn't stay focused on anything I was zoning out things with moves sh like shape-shifting people I saw weren't the people that, I, that were there I didn't recognize myself in a mirror my reflection is not my reflection it was just a, a I was traumatized I can't explain it any different than that so moving on to why I left that university now I was originally a student at University of Central Lancashire and honestly it is the shittest university I have been to. The support that they offer is its worse than the crisis team, honestly. It was such a horrible way to be treated, how I was treated. Because if you don't know, my ex-best friend, Alice, went to the university and said, oh, she's been arrested for lying about her mental illness and wasn't but hey why not pass some blame around and the university basically said that I needed to have a fitness to study assessment again and honestly in my opinion she was out of line and I'll never, I will never forgive her I forgot to put my light on. Oops. So, yeah, UCLan was not my university. I I dropped out. Got my certificate of higher education. I earned it. And I moved universities to the University of West London. And I ended up studying at Metal Film School. So, yeah. University of West London have been really supportive of me. They email me to check in on me. And oh, fucking sirens. 
we're gonna fast forward past my London experience because I've been very public about that if you want to see videos of what I've been up to while I've lived in London there's, there's videos on my channel I want to talk about what happened when I lived in Brighton for three weeks when I was living in Brighton I took my most fatal overdose and yeah I took the entire pack of glycolazide tablets, which is a medication that lowers your blood sugar. And honestly, my sugars weren't great, but I hadn't been eating, so yeah. The crisis team called an ambulance. There was no police, thank God. I was placed under a section 5-2 so I couldn't leave and I was told I didn't have capacity because my blood sugar was so low. So they treated me regardless of whether I wanted to, they got security to hold me down on the bed while they injected me. But there was a real possibility of me dying because they couldn't get glucose into me fast enough. My blood sugar kept dropping below 2 when it's supposed to be between 4 and 8. From there I was assessed, I was put onto a section 2. I was in general hospital for two weeks, on um, 2 to 1 with security and 1 to 1 with a mental health nurse. I was honestly doing absolutely everything I could do to hurt myself, so I was restrained a lot. But after two weeks I was then transferred to the Priory, which if you haven't seen my playlist, I'll link it on the iCard up there, you can hear about my experience of psych ward. I'm proud of how far I've come. Thank you for supporting me and thank you for watching this video if you're still here. If you are still here, thank you for watching this long video. I would apologise for the length, but it's not as long as the last one I did, so I'm not going to apologise. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.